So Paul, can you comment on the work that the Life Cycle Assessment Advisory Group has, has done within the processing supply chain? Sure. Um, the, the work in the supply chain has is, is focused on a couple of key aspects. One, we've, we've conducted a high level review of all published data in this area. Okay, and that was part of the original uh, review work uh, that the, the chairman of our technical advisory group, Dr. Beverly Henry, uh, performed for us. Since then, we've actually we've also uh, worked on a number of individual case studies for particular demand chains or supply chains. We've, we've gone through the pipeline and looked at um, the, uh, the contribution of each stage in the processing pipeline to the footprint of the final garment. Uh, so that's that's been a really important part of what we do. It will be continue to be very, very important for us moving forward. And it's an area where individual companies can really contribute to the process. It's basically um, with, with uh, protection of privacy uh, and commercial interest to um, pull together some data which attests to the sorts of good practices that are occurring in the pipeline. What are the relevant factors for the life cycle assessment in this area, such as water and energy, uh, and what challenges do you see in, in this area? Yeah. Look, the key metrics that are applied to all are primarily about energy um, and water use, uh, and the major metrics. There are, other, there are others as well that um, are applied to all textiles, not just wool. For, for wool, there are, yeah, there are challenges. There are, there are also many opportunities. Um, Wool already is probably the most recycled fibre, certainly the one with the longest history in this area. So a big part of our challenge is to actually tell the story, uh, to work with uh, companies who are, if you like, examples of uh, particular stages of the pipeline or particular parts of the pipeline we need to collect information on and communicate and actually pull together the, the, the commercial data. So, what can industry members do to help this work? Look, there's a couple of things that um, I think will really help and I'd encourage uh, industry members to, uh, to think about. One is to be aware of the process that we have underway. It's a, it's a process with, which is sponsored by a number of the major uh, growing and processing uh, countries around the world. So we've got a collective IWTR process which is great. We've got a number of the world's best scientists in this space we are working with in terms of uh, the footprint of wool. Then in terms of how they can uh, take part, there's particularly, there's, we're looking to work with companies on individual case studies, on uh, pulling together compelling examples of how wool is processed right the way through the pipeline um, to tell the story. Uh, so there's awareness but also participation. Um, this is an issue that the environmental credentials of all is an issue that is not necessarily going to go away. It's becoming increasingly important to consumers and therefore it's completely uh, logical that the family of wool, all the companies involved in the wool industry would um, be aware of it and where possible um, help address our reputation.